Where's it gonna be? The Congo. South Africa. America. I don't know. I can't tell you. I don't even know where we're going. Russia. It could be in Alabama. Hawaiian Island. Bad chance of that happening. Somewhere. Somewhere. Do you know? I don't know where. Wouldn't know a clue. Somewhere in Europe. We all know what we're looking for. I'd love to see it go to a right though. I think they were looking at a few different places. You know, people were talking Ragon and New Zealand. I heard Australia was on the map. I was talking Lennox. Everyone's like throwing out calls. Well, if you ask me, I'd say Reunion Island for sure again. Yeah. This way, that place, everywhere. It was just the talk of the town. You hear it's been finalised in one spot. Hey, you found this spot. Well, where are we going? And then they just like went somewhere else completely. We found out um, beginning of the year. I was like, no way. You know, I was stoked to know we were coming here. We always knew in our hearts that it would be just epic for waves. Why didn't someone think of that earlier? And this year, we've moved it to Indonesia. Somewhere. Somewhere. Somewhere in Indonesia. It's all happening here. This is ground zero for surfing. Oh, the cheese Bali. On the way, everybody like, yes. You know, like, yeah. I think the uh, search event concept is, is phenomenal. And I think, you know, when Rip Curl came up with the concept of, of taking the search to the ASP World Tour, and uh, creating a roving license. It really has inspired a lot of the, the guys on tour, I think. It's cool having a, a new event pop up on tour every year, you know, having Rip Curl move theirs. There's lots of good waves out there, so it's cool to be exploring them and, and um, having events at them. There are 11 events on tour every year, and every other event on tour is at an established location. You know, the surfers know where they're going. They went there last year, they'll go there again next year. But with the search, Rip Curl have got a unique license called a roaming license, and that basically means that they're, they've got their pick of any wave in the world. Well, the 2005 one, they went to reunion. A uh, contest hadn't been a reunion, I think, in probably 10 years. Oh, we had epic waves at the reunion to kick it off, and uh, St. Lou, Mick Fanny won that one. Yeah, we the first one was pretty damn fun. It was a big globe. And then the next year we had probably the best waves in history for a contest anyway, down at La Jolla in, in Mexico in 2006. The Mexico event was the only event we've ever had on tour where the first four days we finished the event. I think it was the best waves we ever had for a contest. That was just unbelievable. That's still the best surf I've ever surfed in my life. 2007 was always you know, a pretty tough act to follow on from the, uh, the Mexican event. Last year, a really challenging setup at Eureka in Chile for the boys. We had some pretty decent days. It was a little bit different as well. Something, something out of the ordinary, somewhere you'd probably never go otherwise. So that was great. Every year, we, we say we won't stay in a place. Like everyone loved Mexico. They wanted to have the event every year in Mexico. But no, this year, we've moved it to Indonesia. Yeah, I think we've got a pretty good setup in the two venues. We've got Uluwatu breaks pretty much from one to 10 feet, and Padang breaks from probably four to eight feet. So you, normally, you can normally surf Uluwatu any day of the year. It picks up all the swell, so there's always waves here. If it gets too big at Uluwatu, we can move to Padang. So we've got a really good window in which to run the event. Been working on it for about three years for Ulu and Padang and just trying to get here. There was an embargo by the ASP on Indonesia because of political unrest and um, terrorism, basically. And we felt that it would be really good for surfing to be one of the first major sports to go back after that and just to be able to try to be, to bring some joy back through sport. A dream of the future in your eyes. All the Balinese guys, are, they love surfing so much that it's created a little frenzy for sure, you know, I've been to Bali a couple times this year already and it was just the talk of the town, everyone's talking about this event. It's great for the Balinese and the Indonesian surfers to have an event in Indonesia. Now, they don't get to see the best surfers in the world a lot, to see them actually competing is really good for the Indos, I think. It's pretty good for us, you know, it's just like we're watching uh, like the best movie on the theatre, you know. I believe that by us having the ASP event here, my goal of this is to open up Indonesia and get the ASP back in a big way. I'll feel really good when it's over and someone's spun that globe, the Rip Curl Planet trophy, and the winners raised it above their head and we've had a nice quiet couple of beers to celebrate and we've managed to put some magic back into the ASP World Tour. That'll be a really good thing.
before the rip curl contest, I was sitting in my little bungalow down the reef a little bit and woke up, kind of had breakfast and looked down the reef and saw this boat that looked like it was parked straight on the reef. Um, there was no wind or, or kind of waves at all that day either, so it was just it looked like I'd gunned it straight onto the reef. You know, it was just a bit of swell for the next few days and it eventually kind of ended up, you know, high tides kind of pushed it in every set. You could see it would just go in a little bit further. Obviously it's kind of made its way across the reef, but yeah, the, the wave's definitely still working for round one, that was, was pumping. I don't know what the plan really is, um, but I think it would be pretty difficult to get it out of its spot now without probably pulling it apart and picking it off bit by bit. A lot of questions on everyone's lips when it comes to Kelly. Kelly who? Who? <laughs> How does he do it? I'd like to know. <laughs> I don't know what's going through his head. He's doing something right. He's a freak. Four out of five events is probably unheard of. He's having a shock right now. I feel kind of bad for him. Kelly's got a huge lead with four wins. This is madness. And everyone come, he has a slump, you know, so he'll get out of it. There's no one challenging him, him at all. No one else in tours had a win except Bruno as a wild card. When it rains and pours. Why has he found the fire? And why is he able to turn it on when no one else can? You ask him, I don't know. Um, I don't know what to put it down to. It just seems to be just falling in place. Well, you can say that. <laughs> At the start of the year, no one was talking about Kelly. Like Everyone thought, oh, he's had his time. He's getting older and he's probably lost the hunger and the passion to um, go for another title. I think Kelly was just playing it by ear and when he started doing well, he realised it was going to be a, a really good chance for a world title. After the first couple of wins, he, um, yeah, he's really put his, uh, put his head back on. He's earned every one of those wins. He's just destroyed everyone. You know, he's just raised the bar again for being an old bugger. And, um, yeah, but we're trying to catch him. <laughs> Uluwatu is, is such a special wave. I mean, it, it starts on your, um, you know, on your walk down, down into the cave and you step off, off onto the sand and you're in, in the middle of this giant cave that sort of bends around and you can't see the wave until you sort of come around the corner. It's like a moment of, you know, real appreciation of nature and really makes you feel like you're on an adventure. They say that there's the goddess of the South Sea the Balinese surfers, as they go down and they're in the cave, before they get in the water, they'll go and they'll ask for permission to the goddess of the South Sea just to go into the ocean so she doesn't mess around with them. So I feel a little bit eerie at first. All the ocean echoes off all the walls and stuff. The cave's amazing. Just, just that alone is really beautiful. What started running through my mind was the pictures I remember seeing people like paddling out from there. And all those started going through my head and then 
Um, and then I had the standard like, I'm Jerry Lopez, and um, this is the first time I'm going out at this wave. And then you're just in this time warp zone. I don't know if there's too many places you get that kind of feeling, you know? One of the seven wonders of surf. You know, it's one of those walks you gotta go down. Bells is one of those spots. You walk down the stairs. Certain uh, spots have the, their little things about them. And walking through the cave at, uh, at Uluwatu is one of them. As you walk out and you get to the water, you just see it open up right in front of you. And you're just looking at it peeling down the line. At low tide, you can kind of walk most of the ways out, and then you just jump and paddle. And at high tide, you pretty much paddle most of the way out. Uluwatu is a, a wave that's got so many different faces on so many different tides and swell directions. You've got the peak, which is good on a higher tide, which has been really contestable. You've got the race track on a lower tide on smaller swells, which is where we are now. Sort of drains along the reef, along the cliff. And then you've got outside corner when it's bigger and wallier and the tide's lower. It's a huge playing field. You know, the reef's really long. It seems like you get lost out there pretty easy if, you, if you're not careful. There's so much water moving out there. Pretty easy to get washed way down the reef. Um, you know, coming in is, is a lot heavier because there's so much sweep that if you don't come in right at the right spot, you're pretty much going to be heading down towards Padang. The coming in sucks. If it's high tide, it, it's the worst. If you miss that keyhole in high tide, you might not give up. Go to Cooter. <laughs> it can be a lot of work, you know, until you really learn how things are going. And if that's your first experience in Bali, that's perfect. You go and surf other places and you, you've kind of got now the respect for the ocean. It's great that Uluwatu is the first place a lot of guys surf and, and there's a reason for it. It's a good wave. Bali is a Hindu island, so it's different from Java and most of Indonesia. If you're Balinese, you're Hindu. The Hinduism that you have here is just a mix between Buddhism and Hinduism and a little bit of their own traditional beliefs. It's all about balance, basically. You know, they want to give the small offerings down on the ground for kind of the bad guys, I guess you could say, the guys that would cause traffic accidents. And then they put them up on the higher levels for like the, the pure gods. And those, they'll just put on flowers and incense. You'll see the black and white cloth. 
You'll see a lot of people wear it. You'll see it around temples. It's everywhere you look, and that's the harmony between good and bad. And that's where Bali sits in between the good and the bad. It sits in that balance. The culture of Bali is very strong still. The tradition that these people have is incredible. They live so much more harmoniously than we do. And the Western world can learn some lessons from these people. They're really generous sort of people, I think, and really they always seem happy and um, I just think they've got a really friendly sort of spirit and they're, they're, I really like the, the Balinese people. They're really nice people and um, the food's amazing too. Nasi goreng, mi goreng, noodles, rice, chicken. You can live like a king over here and eat such good food and stay in such amazing accommodation, villas, hotels, whatever you want to stay, stay in. It's just, uh, it's as good as it gets. You know, for us coming here, we're really fortunate because it's, it's very cheap to live really well here. And so you can eat really well and you can get around and see everything and do everything. Bali is also like a place of kind of a different contrast as well. Like, you, like in Kuda, it's just crazy and like everything's on you all the time. And then, but I mean, just like half an hour away right here, it's so peaceful and it's just totally different. It's sort of one word for us is um, with, with Bali is magic and we just really wanted to paint how magic it was for surfers, you know, it's such a beautiful place and we just hope that it kicks on and surfers continue to come here and have a good time for as long as they can. Bali's a surfer's paradise, there's waves everywhere, it's sunny, offshore every day, um, you couldn't ask for anything more. It's kind of like a really great skate park, you know, some half pipes, a couple bowls, just kind of real rippable surf. been a real link between surfers and, and the local uh, local Balinese people and um, it is such a, such a cruisy, relaxed, affordable, fun uh, way of life over here, you know, for a surfer, it's, you, you know, there's not many other places you could, you could top. It's really great to, to sort of pay respects or you know homage to 
Bali being one of the first places to really inspire surfers. I think all those early images back in the 70s of people riding, you know, Uluwatu, and this is sort of what intrigued surfers from all over the world to want to uh, travel and, and surf new waves and, and uh, experience new cultures. I mean, it is one of the old favorites of surfers around the world, and it has a significant position in world surfing. I mean, when people started surfing here, whatever it was, 35, 36 years ago, and I remember those days, you know. I started here way back then, and through those three and a half generations, I think surfers around the world, they've related to the people and the culture, you know, and the place and the waves. So it's got, it's got some magic. When I was a kid, um, I remember seeing, I was like, wow, where's those crazy lefts? And, and there was nothing on the cliffs when those guys surfed it. It wasn't so long ago that it was a you know, pretty remote place. And um, the first surfers that came here, I think, were Australians. Well, Ulu, you know, it was Steve Cooney and Rusty Miller opening it up in Morning of the Earth with Albie Falzon. He was the first guy to really make it famous. You know, I think one of the guys was like a 15-year-old kid with no leash going out and it was six to eight feet or something, so that was pretty impressive. Back then, to pull up and see, you know, to find this place and they're out there at six to eight feet and like the three of them, you know, it must have been kind of dreamy. You know, I've heard a lot of stories about it. Talked to a lot of guys who were here in the early days and, and got some good waves, you know. I'm pretty good friends with Banksy and he's told me some stories about the place. You know, you always heard the, the Jerry stories and even the um, Lynchy stories and stuff when these guys were coming over here. And it's a wave that's been around for so long and it's been exposed to the world for so long, it's, um, it's kind of just been taken for granted. And it's still a world-class, one of the best waves in the world. Well, the first year I came to Uluwatu was 82. I mean, there was nothing here. It was the original sort of group of Warungs that are down the bottom. You know, I surfed here for a week by myself. Back then it was all about the book it, and, and even then there was no, you know, people didn't really surf for London and Impossibles, and Bingham was just starting to be surfed. And in those days, Padang was really exotic. And then when the Mentawis hit the scene, they kind of became the focus for quite a few years, and it was all about the mental eyes, and Bali was almost forgotten, really. It's kind of weird because I. You know, I've spent a lot, like a lot of time in Indo, but it was always like boat trips and got a lot of press kind of probably like 10 years ago and it's kind of like been forgotten about. There's still sort of a lot of mystery here, even though it's really crowded. I mean, there's a lot of traveling surfers here, but it's still kind of a mysterious place. It's funny how it's, it's, it's had that longevity in that it's, apart from maybe Kauai or Oahu, it's, it's the island that has the most the highest concentration of quality surf, probably any island in the world. And that's why Bali is, you know, it's going to survive things like the bombings and terrorist threats and all the rest of it. It's, particularly for Australians, it's just so accessible and it's a good time as well as good surf. It's an, it's an irresistible package for a lot of surfers.
I've been to Indonesia probably five or six times and uh, it's my first time to Bali. I'm traveling with uh, my family this time and I got to you know surf a lot in Indonesia mental, mental wise a lot uh, by myself with, uh, with the team riders and stuff but um, this time I come with the family. It's actually a lot more fun this way. The place we're staying is uh, Puri Uluwatu Villas and uh, you just walk down through the steps and it goes right down to the cave. Yeah, here we are at the cave at Uluwatu and uh, I've seen photos many times. Uh, it's our first time. The boys are really happy to be here. They get to surf rights all the time so uh, being goofy footers we love to surf uh, perfect less. Boys are really getting used to just surfing in you know shallow uh, reefs, so that's good so far. They've been pretty good. I just hit my funny bone and no one cares. Yeah, I like it. It's probably one of, one of the best last surf in a long time. Is it fun? Yeah. I got a few. My name is Bruno Santos, 25 years old, from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, and I love battles. <laughs> it only takes a second to believe in something if you see it with your own two eyes. He is one of the best tube riders I've ever met in my life. He is incredible. Your first impression of him, if you haven't seen him surf, it's just super mellow and crazy, and like, you'd never expect him to do the stuff he does in the water. He just he goes so hard. I'm a really relaxed guy, so the same when I when I am surfing. I asked for the Rip Cool to invite me for this event because I know there's a lot of good lefts in Indonesia, and they gave me the wild card. I'm pretty happy. One more opportunity to surf the best guys. You know, Rip Cool is probably wise to put him in an event like this. He's a great two rider, on, especially on his forehand, I think. And every time he's gotten into Connors, he surprised people. He, I think he won the trials at Pipe one year. He beat some guys last year in Chile. And he pretty much lit everybody up in Tahiti this year. Bruno Santos is a tremendous tube rider. He's got amazing wave karma. You know, he just seems to, to always find the, the best waves. I'm not surprised at all that he won the event at Tahiti. He's probably proven to be the best wild card ever to get into just CT events. He beat me a couple of times. <laughs> He's one of those dark horse guys that, uh, given the right conditions, when the waves are heavy and, and really hollow, he's going to be a dangerous draw in this event. The biggest problem that's always been a thorn in the side of uh, the Association of Surfing Professionals and all the big companies is you can't broadcast surfing live on TV because you just don't know when the event's going to happen. You can't schedule a surfing contest. So the web, web's just the perfect medium to hold surfing. You can send out a newsletter as soon as the event starts and you're broadcasting. We've got internet good, we've got all our cameras, we've got one in the water, we've got one on the beach. We've got another one ready above the boat when the sun goes round, so we're looking good. It's funny to think back when Contest first started doing webcasts, which I think was like 2002. It was pretty smart in those days, you know. And you look at the things now, and they're, you know, they're bloody TV shows. The satellite dish here that could send a signal to Mars. This is where all the webcasts and goes, come with me. And we've got some guys over here producing some TV show content. Over here we've got um, we've got the Windows Media stream going out to the world. Just a little bit further along here we've got we've got our Rip Time Vivid as technology. Just behind us over here you can see we've got some French commentary, Portuguese commentary team. It's really great sports broadcasting, even if it's really raw. It's not. We're not ESPN, you know. It's, come to a, a level where you've got six camera angles, you're streaming all over the world. And when I was a grommet, you didn't know what happened until you bought ASL or whatever mag you did around the world. That's where you got your results. Now you just see it online and there's a million plus people at any given event enjoying it the same way everyone is on site. 
Here's the team that bring all the sound to you. From the on-beach interviews, communicating down to the surfers. Here's the directing team actually whacking out the webcast. Let's check it out, it's live right now. It's kind of unique in a way, in that you know, it doesn't happen anywhere else. It's forged its own little unique kind of um, niche there, you know, and it's kind of created this whole you know, community out there. I think that's the, probably the biggest asset that World Surfing's got, is being able to, to broadcast what we're doing live on the internet. Got a word out there for all your fans out on the web? For sure, I um, want to say hi to everybody. Uh, I know people in Portugal are going pretty crazy. I think more than any other professional event, the search event is really dependent on webcast and that's that's really how 99% of the surfing world are going to be exposed to the event. It's been pretty amazing for the sport. It's you know it's been one of one of the things that's really allowed surfing to take off in the past, you know, probably three or four years in, in particular. Yeah it's tuning people in, putting people there live and that's you know that's what they want. Thank God for the internet. <laughs> Try and find some waves away from the crowd. Looks like a bit of reef. It would be nice to, to get out here and surf somewhere new. And hopefully, uh, hopefully it stays good for us for a little bit. Looks really fun. <laughs> Looks unreal.
amazing little wave. It offers pretty much everything. It's steep, it's fast, it's powerful. I got some of my best waves so far on the trip. I mean, if you handmade a wave, this would be one, you know, one of the best waves. Wow, it's crazy good. Get ready, get ready to lose yourself. The local Bali crew, uh, really good surfers. Um, you know, they got the, they've got these waves wired and you know, the levels that they're surfing at is amazing. I spent a lot of time with a lot of local surfers and uh, they're a you know, force to be reckoned with. They all, they all surf so well and they've got a great training ground. They get the most rippable waves in the world. They get great tubes, they get everything. So they're all surfing really good. I never really knew until like a few years ago, like the kind of talent that was here and it's, it's pretty, pretty good to see, yeah. There's a lot of good Balinese surfers, you know, there always has been even going back into the 80s with Kentuk Mender and Marte Kasim. Those guys were great surfers and um, you know, there's so many young kids who are surfing 10, 12, 13 years old and uh, you know, they're, they're ripping. Years ago, Bali just kind of came on the map with Rizal. Rizal Tanjung's a great surfer. He's definitely the godfather of the place. He runs the show. He's been Bali's number one guy for years. He took the initiative to get outside of the country and go and surf around the world and built up a name for himself. And he's done a great job with that, bringing the spotlight back over here, people realizing there is talent. Watching him lead the way for all these young Balinese kids, it's, it's really cool. Rizal helped me, helped me a lot, helped me a lot, yeah. He told me like what to do, you know. Like Rizal, he's the first guy. And now, like the new generation, like me or Me and Mega, and all my friends, like try to copy him, you know, like I want to be famous like yourself too. You know, there's some really good surfers for me. You've got Pepin, Ted, Lil Mega, Garut. Yeah, they're classic guys too. Garut surfing is modeled, I'd say, after Kony Rob. He surfs really good. Who knows, he could end up being the first Indonesian on the World Championship Tour. I'm sure there's going to be a guy on tour soon, like when you surf Kramis and that, they're just freakish, the stuff they pull, they're so radical, and out yeah, Padang as well, they're great tube riders. I just think they have a little bit of trouble traveling though, they get really homesick. They're definitely homebodies, they seem like they really enjoy their, ha their home, and how can you blame them? If I go traveling, like, it's kind of, you know, like, kind of hard thing to forget, like, we miss our home, the food, and money, kind of, like, expensive than Bali. Yeah, I think that's the, the hard thing, but we got to forget that, you know? Sure. With time, it'll be some, some of the guys on tour, for sure. See an Indonesian get into and qualify for the World Tour, it's going to happen. It's tough to eat, uh, my knee is going to be tough to spread because it's been the, one of the best surfers of the event so far and, and the waves are also really uh, kind of tough. Beautiful contest, it still puts on the best, you know, and um, it's sick, you know, being here and seeing all the people on the reef out.
We're just relaxed and having fun and getting barreled out there. And uh, just so happened to come together that we're in the final. And you know, if there's one guy that I don't mind losing to in the final, it's Chris. Hawaii, Hawaii, let's have a big fight! You know, I mean, if I could win any event based on trophies, this would be the one. Wherever it stops, he shall go. Wherever it stops, he shall go. In the North Pacific. Hawaii, there you go. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.